Hey, so if you've been watching my channel for some time, you know that I'm a big believer in the Mike Austin swing. Now, Mike Austin was a legendary teacher and long driver uh, who was in the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest drive in a round of tournament golf. So 515 yards, he hit the ball in 1974. And his method is a little bit non-traditional. I'd love to show you the basics of it right after this. And I wanna show you how I strongly believe that this method hits the ball not only longer, but straighter, more efficiently, for less effort. And I also believe it does, puts less stress on your body as well. So if you'd like to learn something a little bit different that might get you going in the right direction with your golf game, then stay tuned right after this. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey, a mission, to hit the ball long and straight off the tee, long and straight all the way to the green because I think that's what makes more golf more fun. Hey, if you're on the same journey and you would like to hit the ball longer and straighter too, then by all means, um, subscribe to the channel, turn on your bell notifications, like this video at the end if you liked it, and uh, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget about my website, HitItLonger.com. Head over there right after you watch this uh, because you're going to get over 100 free articles and videos that I think are going to help improve your swing and lower your scores. So when Mike Austin hit a golf ball 515 yards, it sounds so unbelievable, especially considering he was pushing 60 years old at the time. Really pretty remarkable to um, have that kind of club head speed, which when they reverse engineered the drive, they found that he must have been swinging around 150 miles an hour, um, taking advantage, of course, of all the conditions, which there were extreme conditions that day. Um, any record long drive always has conditions. So what I mean by that is uh, downwind, um, hot and dry, uh, bare dry ground for sure, and maybe a little bit of luck with a a really good bounce off a real hard part of the fairway. Maybe you just got a little bit lucky. Mike describes it that it didn't follow a parabolic arc, but it just seemed to hold a line. And his wife was there that day, Tanya, and um, she describes it as the hand of God just held it up in the air. So it's almost like a spiritual religious experience to watch the ball fly down the fairway like that. And um, but no question that. You know, he had high temperature in the high 80s. He had elevation between two and 3,000 feet. The, uh, you know, the outskirts of Las Vegas where it was done and um, wind about 30 miles an hour, possibly the highest gust of the day, even up to 35. So very strong wind. And of course, golf course they, where they were playing at wasn't this super duper lush. It was a uh, very dried out, almost airplane runway uh, type of condition in the fairway. So everything was just brewing for him to hit this incredible drive. What is remarkable about, uh, remarkable about it, I think, is that it missed the flagstick by a yard as it, it waved as it was traveling past, uh, rolled over the green and onto the next tee box of a 450 yard par four. So Mike was really something else. He was, um, perennially in the top 10 of Golf Magazine's um, instructor list that they would come out with every year, the top 100 instructors, which is a very prestigious list. It's very hard to get on there. And Mike was always in the top 10. He just had so much knowledge. He might not have been the easiest guy to get along with all the time, but he had so much knowledge. It was like he was a walking, talking medical textbook, and I'm not exactly sure where he got it all. but. Today I want to show you some of the basics of the swing he taught. Um, hopefully you're going to find that it's just a simpler way of first hitting the ball straight and then hitting the ball for power. Uh, it's a little untraditional you're going to see, but if you'll just hang in there with a little bit of an open mind, understanding that you might break a couple of rules that have been hammered into you over all these years, if you can keep an open mind, uh, then I think you're going to get, make some real progress with your golf game. Okay, so let's take a look at the highlights of the setup because the setup is where you're going to bias yourself or give you a self a trend of 
making the right motion easier and making the wrong motions harder. They just won't feel natural once you've got the setup pretty good. So Mike always wanted us to, instead of sitting like you're sitting on a stool, bending to the ground from the knees, Mike always wanted us to keep our knees fairly straight, not locked, but fairly straight. And instead bowing at the hips, which means that the rear end has got to get behind you this way. So we're looking for about a 30 degree bend at the hips so that the arms can just simply hang right over the toes, like so. Once you're in that 30 degree bend, I'm now going to take a one arm measurement. There's my stance. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a pec grab with the left arm to make sure it's really connected, just like this. Now, that's the one arm measurement. Now, as you know, your right hand fits underneath the left hand on the grip. So if you were simply to put your right hand on it, you would end up in an over the top position right off the bat. Let me show you from this angle again. Here's a good starting point. And here comes my right arm and I am way over the top with my setup. I'm to the left and my right shoulder is too high. And that, like I said, it's gonna bias you. If you get the setup good, it's gonna bias you to making good motion. But if you get the setup poorly, it's gonna bias you into more of a steep down and across right off the bat. So let's learn how to set that right side under a little bit differently. Here's my one arm measurement. Now in order to get my right hand under the left, I'm gonna to have to make it fit more elegantly than what I just showed you. So what I'm gonna do here, and you'll see on the chair, I'm gonna take my hips and I'm gonna bump them target word. It's very subtle, it might be just an inch or so. And what that's gonna do is put me at a very slight tilt at the spine, also dropping my right shoulder lower than the left. like this. Now, my right hand now has the freedom to come underneath this way, and yet I'm gonna be square to the target line with my shoulders and feet and hips. So, from this angle, it's bump the hip, flex the knee, that lowers the right hip, lowers the right shoulder. Now I can fit very elegantly right under there. And you can see my shoulders are square to my feet. Mike also asked us to have the correct lead, which is the forward lean that's built into the, main, the design of the club. I've got a nine iron here. I believe a nine iron should be leaning forward about four inches just like this. So not here. That exposes too much loft and too much bounce into the ground. And if I wanted to get to impact the right way, I'm gonna have to find a different position with my hands and my wrists in order to get that forward lean. So I'd rather just start closer to my impact position. I've got my hips this way like I'm gonna do in the downswing. Right there. So I've got the right forward lean. Now I have a nine irons worth of loft presented. The leading edge is in contact with the turf and I'm ready to hit it on the proper trajectory with the proper divot. All right, let's move on to the compound pivot. This is something that's gonna be very new to you uh, if you haven't heard about the Mike Austin swing before, but I want you to hang in there. There's a reason we're doing all of this. It's very specific. There's nothing here that's just arbitrary or willy nilly. Everything is like like if you designed a machine to hit a golf ball, except the machines that you see hitting golf balls, like for robot testing and stuff, well, they have one arm and they just sit on one base. So if you designed a human machine to hit a golf ball, this is the way that you would set up. So the compound pivot is gonna work like this. It's gonna work in three motions. This is what I teach all my beginners when I get a beginning golfer and boy, they get going right away. They start hitting the ball up in the air and straight almost within 10 or 15 minutes. So there's 
no struggling when they're beginning at all. Now watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to move down the chair so you can see the exposed end of the chair here. Now contrary other other methods that you might find, they want you to just turn your hips 45 degrees. Some of them even want you to push your pelvis targetward as you turn 45 degrees. And that, boy, that puts me in a negative position. I feel more weight on my left foot right now than my right foot. What you're going to find about the compound pivot instead is that it's a just a com more complete shifting of weight. I like to call it as if Happy Gilmore wasn't allowed to take a run up. It's the most weight shift that you can possibly get into your swing. The more most body force you can be moving at the target and down into the ground as you come through the ball. That's going to work like this. First I'm going to take my my right butt cheek which is firmly on the chair behind me and I'm going to slide it. So I'm going to break a big cardinal rule here to keep my my hip inside this post here. I want to break this post and I'm going to push the hip to the right of it. I'm going to try to center my pelvis over the inside of my right heel this way. So I'm, I'm moving it this way. I'm not even going to attempt to turn it into the wall. I'm just sliding it along the wall like this. Now when that happens, we're going to get a tilt of the spine. We're getting a tilt. This is actually a really good thing because it's going to make the left shoulder work down, the right shoulder work up, and it's going to be an integral part of getting the right tilt to turn ratio in the backswing that's going to set your club right on plane. So we're getting number one, bigger wind up, bigger shift of weight on the backswing, and number two, we're facilitating a perfect swing plane. So motion number one, super important. Bump the hip to the right. Now, you don't have to do it as much as Mike did. Way over here. That's if I was really in a long drive contest and I was just going for broke. Need to squeeze out that extra couple miles an hour. But really, you can just go a couple of inches and you'll be just fine. Just enough to establish the right tilt to turn ratio with your shoulders and hips. The next thing we have is the flexion of the knee. So the knees are simply going to work like you're walking in place, like this. And I want you to flex your knee outwards away from the wall behind you. So I'm going right at the camera. Until my heel comes up. So you watch from this angle. See how my heel, once I bend my knee enough, it naturally just wants to come up. I just want you to practice this way, kind of marching in place. The third idea we're going to be doing is at the ankle, and here we're going to be rolling in. So you can just practice rolling the feet in, rolling the feet in. These are fantastic building blocks to build this swing, especially the last two, the marching in place and the foot rolling in. That's what all the greatest golfers in history have done. Just watch their videos. They're all very free with the feet and the knees, detaching then attaching again as they switch sides. Now putting that all together, I'm going to make a full compound pivot here and I'm going to allow my torso to respond by winding. That's going to make the club come back about an hour and it's going to set it on the perfect arc right there. So you watch this action here. No arm or wrist going on here, just compound pivot. Right there. My knee will come towards the middle of the stance. The weight is on the right foot about 75 to 80 percent. And I'm trying to get on to the instep of this left foot where the only part of my shoe that's touching is this little white strip here. Now going on the downswing, I'm just trying to reverse everything. So if my hip went this way, this hip is going to go this way. So on the downswing, I'm going to move my hip into the left post, sliding it, yes, sliding it. I'm going to flex my knee out until the heel raises up off the ground. And then I'm going to roll to the inside of my right foot, getting on the side of that foot. That's going to position my knee and my thigh 
in good position. And again, I have the reverse tilt of the spine. My torso is going to respond by unwinding, turning around and facing the target. Now, whether or not you want to adopt this full method, even if that backswing is a little too much for you to tackle right now, and you want to kind of you know, test this other stuff out first, it would be perfectly fine for you to just learn the through pivot, the downswing part of the pivot. And that's going to give us, again, the club moving in an arc from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock and then around to 11. So you watch this action here. There's a one hour swing and then a one hour swing this way. What that does for us is it creates the, the club to make a perfect arc back and through and it's keeping the club face square to that arc. It becomes very difficult to hit the ball offline. Let me try one from this angle. So that's dead straight on my target line. Uh, no side spin either. The other thing it's giving you with this compound pivot, just to work on the pivot alone, is low point control. My low point is going to be always in front of the ball to my left instep. So you'll see here, I'm going to hit the ball clean even though I'm not using any arm or wrist, just pivoting. So there you certainly heard the click of the ball first as I struck ball first, turf second. So if that's one of the issues that you face with your game, a lot of fat shots or thin shots, then certainly this compound pivot is going to help you. you. See how the all the big muscles of the body are shifting and winding and then shifting the other way and unwinding and that's going to give us a consistent low point off the left instep. Okay, let's watch again from the down the line angle. I'm going to construct a one hour swing starting at 12 or at the ball. Now the pivot is going to take me to one. Notice there's a nice tilt in the shoulders. They're not turning flat. I've got a tilt to turn ratio that's making the club arc nicely like this. Then as I shift through, the club is going to stay square to the arc. Let's watch a one hour swing from this direction. It's going to go about 10 or 15 yards is all. The measure of a really good swing that's going to be consistent and repeat for you is a swing, no matter how you do it, it's a swing where the club follows the arc where the tangent is the target line so that your path would be straight at the moment you strike the ball. Not too inside out, not too outside in, but a nice arc circling into the ball. The other thing a great swing would give you is keeping the face of the club squared to that arc this way. So if your club face has the smallest amount of the most gentlest rotation through the strike, not only are you going to hit more shots dead straight, but when you do make a little timing error if you're having a bad day, your misses are going to be very mild, not all over the place. So what I'm telling you is, the way I'm doing it here is not only going to give you plane and path, but it's going to give you fantastic blade control or club face control going through the ball as well. That's going to give us tons and tons of accuracy. Now that's just the basics of the pivot. Constructing the backswing is going to involve arms and wrists, which we can cover at another time. But for now, let's, let's um, wrap up the pivot and we'll move on to the um, free release of the club head.
Mike, do you Fitz, attempt to delay the uncocking of the wrists and the hands on the downswing? I certainly do not. This is where I get to jump on almost anyone when I try to hit the ball. When I move my, my weight over here and my shoulders rotate in this manner, I give the club a throw so it will catch up. Your stimulus begins right here. Everything works as a unit with the hands trying to work faster than the arms so they can't take up the slack that's, that's in the bend of the wrist, like what we call the cock of the hand. So, so many other methods of teaching, they kind of ask you to either delay the uncocking of the wrist this way, or they might even ask you to try to purposely pull the butt of the club towards the ball, which would look kind of like this, which Mike Austin would used to call harpooning the whale or, or ringing the church bell. So contrary to that, I don't believe you should either delay the uncocking of the wrist. It's been actually pretty much busted and proven in all the 3D um, measurements and uh, forces and torques uh, recently. There just is no such thing as a delay. The uncocking of the wrist starts back here and every player on tour, every good player who's ever lived, starts to uncock the wrist back here. So I want you to just um, ditch that idea that you're going to hold the club and then release it at the last possible second. It's just not happening. It's been busted. It's wrong. Argue with me all you want, but the, the graphs and the measurements are all proving it. What I would rather see you do, what Mike prescribed to us, is that we, without impedance, accelerate the club head 180 degrees about the base of the ulnar bone here. Just like that. So you'll notice it's not going to be my arm that is responsible for advancing this end of the stick. That is going to be the job of the compound pivot. You watch as I'm, I'm in my compound pivot going back. And my compound pivot going through has advanced the butt of the club 90 degrees or three hours around the clock. I'm going to leave it to my compound pivot to advance the butt of the club on the right arc around the body. Meanwhile, you see, I'm just simply going to accelerate the club around that bone right there. Two hands, it would look like this. And I'm, I'm just going to try to throw it. So if I were to let go of this thing, it would do a tight helicopter and sail in that direction. So I'm after suppleness, very light, and I'm trying to make the club head swoosh 180 degrees about my wrists from 90 degrees cocked, maybe even more if you have the flexibility and you're looking for more speed to around 90 degrees very quickly, very rapidly, not taking a long time to do it, but very supply and very quickly snapping the right elbow, sending the club around in a circular fashion with a maximum amount of acceleration and freedom. Freedom is the key word. So you've probably had this trained out of you. If you're, you're nodding your head right now, you're, you're shaking your head. No, this can't be right, Steve. This can't be right. This is a flip. This is a cast. It's a flip. You can't hit it like this. There's no way. <laughs> so I, I, I hear this every day. It's all right. Throw it. Release the club bed without any impedance. If you're doing the compound pivot correctly, you're going to see the club will just speed up around the perfect arc with the club face tracking square to the arc. You can't go wrong. Okay, so that's the basics of the Mike Austin swing from a very specific measured setup. We're going to make a compound pivot, which is a more complete shift of weight and controls the tilt and turn of the shoulders to put us on plane. And from there, we're going to compound pivot in the other direction and we're going to just throw the hell out of the club head and we're going to try to be really free. And when we need the distance, we're also going to be try to be really fast. Certainly no restriction in there, no tension, no steering, no controlling. Um, I hope this has been illuminating. Um, I hope you'll give this a try. Maybe just pick out a couple of points uh, maybe that you think might help your swing, try them out. But when you do, um, hey, come on back to this video and give us an update. Leave a comment down, down below 
and let us know what your experience with this technique has been. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Steve. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moorpark, California for hosting us today. This is a wonderful facility. Come on down and hit a bucket of balls. Just ask for Paul or Diane and they'll take good care of you. And as usual, hey, I hope I see you in the next video, but if not, I hope I see you longer and straighter down the fairway.